What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So this week we're going to talk about 10 ways that you can save time using the new tool from Mindsight Studios, Sketch Plus. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks about being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So. If you uh, want to support the show, uh, vote on the extension that I cover every week. Make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you remember, Sketch Plus is a large tool set of tools that was just released by Mindsight Studios, and basically it contains a lot of the tools that you would kind of expect to have in a 3D modeling program that you don't necessarily have in SketchUp. Um, so tools like mirror tools and tools to copy things with arrays and copy along paths and a bunch of selection tools. So I've got a video where I talk about all the tools in depth, but in this video I wanted to talk about 10 practical uses for how you can use Sketch Plus in order to save time in SketchUp. So, so, number one is replacing components. And so let's say that you have a model like this one that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse and you've got a number of different things you want to replace. So in the case of this one, for example, I might want to swap out these light fixtures. So what you could do is you could go in and you could just delete them out, right? And then place your new light fixture in that same place. But that's going to be a little bit more time consuming. What we want to do instead is we want to use Sketch Plus's Replace Component Plus tool. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to select instances of a component. So in this case, I'm going to come in here, do a shift click to select these three. And then you're going to activate the tool to replace that component. And then you just click on the other component that you want to replace it with. Um, now what I want to do is I want to get outside of this group. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to close this component or outside of this component. I'm going to close it again. That way I can come in here and I can click on this object. Now one thing to note about this before we click is notice how when I mouse over this, this is going to show me where my axes are on this object. So right now, for example, these objects have been modeled with the axes on the front right here. So if I use this tool to replace the components at the moment, they're going to be in the wrong position. However, it's really easy to fix that using tip number two, which is use the change axes tool in order to change the axes of objects. So what we want to do is we want to set both of these objects where the axes are in the central location of these objects, right? Because when you replace these, what it's going to do is it's going to replace them based on the axis location. So if I click on the change axes button right here with this object selected, we want to select the back central location, right? So you want this location right here. Then I'm going to hit the enter key. And so notice how what that's done is that's come in and that's changed the axis location on all of these components right here, right? Because these are copies of a component. So when we change the axis location of one, it changed the axis location of the others. Now, if we use that replace component tool, right? So we'll double click or triple click, we'll do a shift click to select these, use replace component, you just click right here in order to replace these. So you can see how swapping these out can be really easy. One other tip about that is just make sure that those component axes are facing the same direction. So make sure the blue is up and make sure the red is facing the same direction so that those are oriented the same way. All right, so another thing that can be a little bit time consuming inside of SketchUp is let's say, for example, that you had something you wanted to do where you wanted to come in here and select all of these windows like this. So say we came in here and we just selected them all like this. And then we accidentally clicked off of it, right? So we lost our selection. So going back in and reselecting those can really kind of be a pain because you have to do a whole bunch of clicking over and over again, things like that. However, with uh, Sketch Plus's select tools, there's an option in here to cycle your previous selection. So if I click this back button right here, notice how it stores the previous selections that we had in here. So I can click this in order to cycle back through the previous selections. And I'm not sure exactly how many of these this stores, somewhere between five and 10, but you can cycle your previous selections like this instead of having to go back and reselect everything. So another thing that starts getting time consuming is when you have a bunch of nested groups, right? Like for example, if I look at this house, at the moment, there's a number of faces in here that don't have materials applied. I'm assuming because the author just wanted to create a front view right here, which I totally get, but we may need this or something. So you could double click and double click and double click to get in here to select an individual face. Um, that's definitely a valid way of doing that, but it's a lot of extra clicking. Well, there's an option inside of Sketch Plus in the selection functions for deep select face. 
And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to activate the tool, mouse over an object, and then notice how this is going to pick up and highlight the different faces that are in here even though they're in groups. Well, what I could do is I could just use this to quickly select this face. So notice how that gets me in here where that face was, and then I could quickly apply a material to it. So if I jump in here, for example, I could just sample this and just apply a roof material to it. We're not going to worry too much about the UV mapping here. I know it's kind of messed up, but notice how what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to jump in and select an individual face without having to do all of that extra clicking. So in addition to being able to deep select faces, you can also deep paint faces. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to select a material. So I'm just going to sample this roof material. And notice how if we click right now, it's going to apply this to the outside of our group. It's going to mess everything up. Um, but if we were to activate that material or select that material and then activate the deep paint faces, what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to just click on a face like this, and you can just quickly apply this to the outside of a group. So let's say that we wanted to apply a siding material to these walls right here. Well, all we would have to do is select the siding and then just use the deep paint material in order to quickly add that siding to those walls, even though they're in groups. So we could apply that to these walls right here. And notice that's not applying this to the outside of our group. So if we double click in here and select this face like this, notice how it's actually applied that material to the group inside of your group geometry. So what that means is that means that you're actually applying this to the faces and you don't have to worry about accidentally seeing it on something else because you're painting the outside of a group. So another thing that can especially if you're downloading 3D warehouse models, another thing that can be really frustrating is if you ever get a model or you accidentally created a model where you've got a bunch of raw geometry that got on a tag. And so notice how, for example, let's say that I wanted to toggle off the windows on here, right? So I just want to toggle these windows off. Well, if I click on this button right here, notice how it's not only toggling off windows, it's also toggle toggling off some of the individual geometry in here. So for example, if I was to jump in here with deep select face and look at this face, notice how this window has a windows tag on it, even though I really only want that on the actual window groups that's in here. Um, so previously what you would have to do is you would have to toggle this off, toggle it back on, go find the geometry that this was on and put it back on the untagged layer. It, it could be a real time consuming issue. Well, what we can do instead is Sketch Plus has a tool in here called Untag Faces and Edges. So in this case, say that I have the house selected, you can just come in here and click on the button for Untag Faces and Edges. That's gonna go through your model and it's gonna find the faces and edges that have a tag associated with them. And so then all you have to do is click in here and that's going to remove that from those faces and edges. So notice how now it's showing you that the only things that have um, a tag associated with them are the windows right here. So now if I jump back out of this, so if I hit escape and hit the space key to jump back out of the group, now if I toggle this on and off, notice how only my windows are turning on and off. So that could be a huge cleanup time saver. All right, so another thing that can take a lot of time is aligning objects. So we're going to use uh, these uh, 2D bushes as an example. So let's say right now you had these bushes in here and they'd been placed, but none of them are really in a line, right? Notice how they're all kind of all over the place. So what we want to do is we want to take them and we want to put them in a line. And so previously what you would have had to do is go move this, find a central point, right? Move it over, move it so that it aligns with another point right here and just do that over and over again. So in the move tool set, Sketch Plus has an align tool that's going to allow you to align multiple objects with each other. So let's say we wanted these four objects to be aligned along a line over here. Instead of having to do that manually, you can just activate the align tool. Notice how that puts a bounding box in here. What the bounding box is going to do is that's going to show you the box around which these objects are placed. You'll notice how you have options in here for different inference points. So you can use this in order to place these along different points in these box. Well in this case what we can do is we can just find the end point right here and just click. And so what that's going to do is that's going to align all of those objects along this green line right here. So notice how now the model axes are going to be aligned along this line. So aligning things inside of SketchUp can be really easy using the Align tool. All right, so let's say we added some terrain 
in here with sandbox tools and you wanted to place the, some trees on the terrain. Well, what you could do is you could come in here and use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy a bunch of these along the ground. So something like this in order to place these in here. So again though, notice how you have to be really careful of your base point and you also have to make sure that uh, that you're spacing things properly and placing things. Placing things along terrain like this can just be um, a little bit painful and probably an easier way to do that is to just model these up above on some kind of a grid and you don't have to be perfect with the grid but let's say that I was to come in here and add some trees here then use the move tool in copy mode in order to add some trees this way. Well then you can just use sketch plus's drop to ground or drop plus tool in order to drop these to whatever the surface is down below. Now one thing to be aware of with this is you do wanna make sure that your uh, component axes are placed at the bottom of your object. And so then all we're gonna do is we're gonna select these trees by clicking and dragging across here. We're gonna activate drop plus and then it's going to ask us to click on the group or component to drop. We're just going to click right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to drop these down so that they intersect with the ground below. So notice how these all got placed so that they're right on top of the ground down below. So you can use this in order to quickly drop objects um, inside of SketchUp. So the other issue with these is they look a little bit uniform. Well, what we could do is we could come in here and we could individually select them and kind of rotate them and scale them. So we could use the move tool rotate this we could scale it down a little bit so it's not the same size but we'd have to do that for all of these different objects well, what we could do instead is we could select all of these objects like this and there's a tool in here for random spin as well as random scale you can even do random position but let's focus on random spin and random scale so if I was to click on this what random spin is going to do is it's going to randomly spin these objects along the blue axis. So if I click, notice how that's gonna randomly spin those like this. So you can use this in order to add randomization and then you could select the same tool for random scale and it's going to randomly scale those objects, right? So if I click in here, notice how this is randomly scaling these up and down. You can also type in a value if you want a wider range, for example. So if we were to type in 0.5, comma 1.5 you're going to notice that now if we click in here the scaling gets even more extreme so what that allows you to do is that allows you to really add randomization to things like trees which need that um, in order to be realistic and so occasionally there's a reason why you want to come in and you want to basically explode everything down to its raw components so let's say for example that we had this group of bushes in here if i double click you can see how i've gone in and i've added some nested groups and other things like that we'll say that we wanted all of this to get back to its individual geometry right so we don't want anything grouped in it anymore so what we could do is we could right click in here and we could explode and we'd have to do that multiple different times for the different pieces in here well there's a button in here called explode plus and if you click the button what that's going to do is that's going to explode everything all of the groups and components down to its raw geometry so if we click on this and then mouse over this and click on it what that's going to do is that's going to go through and recursively explode everything to bring it down to its individual parts. Notice this warning in here. Um, this can cause SketchUp to crash if you were to do it on like a full model, like this house or something like that. It just creates a lot of extra geometry. So it's always recommended to save before you do this. But we're gonna click on okay. And for this, it goes really fast, right? So notice how now, all of these have been exploded to their individual raw geometry. So if you need to do that, Explode Plus is a great tool for that. All right, so those are 10 of the ways you can save time with Sketch Plus. If you're interested in Sketch Plus, I will link to it on this page. But I'd love to hear from you on what you might do with this extension. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.